2011 is the year social media really took off. Facebook reached over 800 million members, representing 10% of the world's population. Twitter reached over 200 million tweets a day. And Google Plus became the world's fastest growing social network with over 25 million users acquired in just four weeks from launch. Wherever you happen to look, in the press, the blogosphere, TV, cable and, dare I say it, social networks, all you heard was chatter about the social media revolution and how it was going to change everything. Well, they weren't wrong, and I have a book out about it called The Social Media Mind, which will be available to purchase as a paperback or download as an ebook from January 2012. Before we even get to that, however, it's fair to say that when you have that much noise being generated around a single practice, and so many people and different brands adopting it, you're more than likely to have what we affectionately call teething problems. And boy, did we get some in 2011. In compiling this short list, I had to shift through scores and scores of incidents in my files, and while the ones I inc included here are by no means definitive, they're certainly defining because they represent moments when something momentous happened, when a milestone moment was reached. So, without further ado, and in reverse order, let the countdown begin. Ten. At number 10, we have New Media Strategies, a social media marketing company, as the name suggests, which when hired by Chrysler to launch an imported from Detroit campaign alongside a Super Bowl ad, managed to lose everything in a single moment when one of their employees involved in the account tweeted the F-word from Chrysler's official Twitter account alongside a derogatory remark about Detroit itself. The result? It cost the employee his job and New Media Strategies lost a lucrative contract when Chrysler pulled the deal. Defining moment, it drove the point home that social media has an impact, that a single tweet really does matter, and that managing social media was a real challenge. Nine. At number 9, we have Quickstar. Every conceivable thing seemed to go wrong for Netflix, the popular video streaming and DVD rental service. When it announced in September, its plans to spin off its DVD rental service into a separate site called Quickstar. The company failed to check if the Twitter handle Quickstar was available. In this case, it wasn't. It belonged to a pot-smoking, sexist, foul-mouthed stu student by the name of Jason Castillo, who enjoyed his newfound celebrity in a series of tweets which only fueled the online bonfire Netflix found itself in. Netflix killed Quickstar three weeks later, but by then 800,000 subscribers wound up quitting the service in the third quarter of the year. Defining moment? a major brand getting just about everything which has to do with social media and online marketing wrong. It became a lesson in avoidance of how not to launch a new online service. Eight. At number 8 is Qantas, Australia's favourite airline, which launched a Twitter contest in November in which it asked followers to describe their dream luxury in-flight experience. It pledged to award top Twitterers with pyjamas and toiletries as a reward. Just a day before, however, contract talks had broken down between Qantas and its unions. As a result, the entire fleet was grounded. The campaign's Twitter hashtag, Qantas Luxury, was hijacked, generating thousands of tweets from unhappy customers. Defining moment, a lesson that timing is everything, even on a Twitter campaign, and that online and offline are no longer separate worlds. Seven. At number seven is Bob Parsons, the colorful and larger-than-life Texan who founded and heads the massive US web domain registry company GoDaddy. GoDaddy was subject to a massive backlash after its CEO tweeted a link to a video of himself shooting an elephant in Zimbabwe. People for the ethical treatment of animals led to an effort urging a boycott of GoDaddy, and competitors tried to capitalize by offering discounted transfer rates and even making donations to elephant charities. Parsons tried to explain the shooting of the elephant as philanthropic work rather than recreation, saying it was to protect a Zimbabwe village from the marauding elephant. This only seemed to exacerbate the damage, providing a lesson for other CEOs whose private life and online conduct reflected on their companies. Defining moment, it taught us that a CEO's personal life is never private, and that when it comes to posting something online, you had better consider all the angles. Six. At number six is Unilever, whose tomato sauce ragu earned the wrath of fathers everywhere after the company created and tweeted about a series of videos of mothers sounding off on the hopelessness of their husbands in the kitchen. In the time-honored tradition of the PR team hoping for a hit, tweets were sent to prominent bloggers in the expectation that this would go viral. It did, though not, not quite in the way the company had expected. 
Tired of the stereotypical approach of Ragu, bloggers blogged and tweeted about how quote unquote Ragu hates dads, making this a trending topic in Twitter and forcing the company to stop the campaign. Defining moment, it showed us that traditional marketing techniques do not work well in social media channels and that the social media conversation really is a two way thing rather than just another broadcast channel for companies and brands. Five. At number five is Kenneth Cole Shoes. The retailer stirred up trouble when he tried to ride the coattails of the Arab Spring social media phenomenon with a tweet Millions are in uproar in Cairo. Rumor is they heard a new Spring collection is now available online. The backlash was as large as it was immediate, forcing the prompt apology which came from the company. Defining moment? We know that social media is commercial only by association. If you use it, you have to display empathy and sensitivity to what is going on in the world around you. Four. At number four is Anthony Weiner, whose unfortunate surname prompted the headlines Wienergate and launched considerably more than a thousand tweets. When a photo of a part of his anatomy which sounds very similar to his surname was tweeted from his account to a Seattle woman in May, Anthony Weiner first denied it, and then he insisted it had been hacked. The scrutiny, however, continued, and the powerful New York congressman, who, it must be noted, had been considered a front-runner for the 2013 New York City mayoral election, was forced to admit that, yes, he had sent the photo himself. As a result, he had to resign from the House of Representatives after 12 years in office. Defining moment? This was the moment social media drove the issue home about there being almost nothing private online. It became a defining moment in US politics, with a powerful congressman admitting all too human transgressions and stepping down from office. It helps to remember here that Wiener, for all his attempts to cover it up, had not indulged in any physical contact of any kind. Nevertheless, the power and reach of social media had become sufficient to paint a less than savoury picture of himself, which had not been improved by his attempts to cover it up. Three. At number three, Virgin America. Being the American wing of a UK company which to some extent invented social media marketing, the social media storm that blew around Virgin America is totally unexpected. When the company changed its booking system, there were considerable problems with flight cancellations, bookings and even flight crews turning up late for work. As a predictable Twitter storm blew up, a vice president of corporate communications at Virgin America claimed that customers and staff were happy with the change and that the company was only experiencing minimal problems with a smooth transition. Furthermore, another company spokesman denied that there were any problems with the booking system. The result was that Virgin American's brand was badly damaged, resulting in customer losses at a time when flight companies struggled to break even. Defining moment? This particular social media disaster is at number three, not just for its scale and reach, but also for the fact that it happened to a company that is seemingly well versed in social media marketing. A reminder, if anyone needed, that it takes constant dedication to excel in the new social media marketing world, and that a momentary lapse is all it takes to undo what has been built. Two. There are only two slots left in the top 10 social media disasters of 2011, and it really is a toss-up between two top contenders. After some deliberation, the number two slot goes to PayPal. PayPal is a global system for making payment transfers and enabling e-commerce transactions, and it became the top contender for taking the Grinch Who Stole Christmas award when in a public exchange of incredible insensitivity with Regretsy, a humor blog that was trying to donate toys to needy children at Christmas, it announced that the PayPal definition of a good cause was making a donation to kittens but not to poor people. It then asked the blogger to close down the charity drive and, for good measure, froze her accounts but kept the commission charged. You can imagine the social media storm that blew up. PayPal's Facebook page started getting complaints at the rate of a thousand a minute. When PayPal committed the cardinal sin of deleting some of them, the social media storm spilled over on Twitter and then on Google+. The result was a PayPal backtrack within 24 hours. It allowed the blogger to run her charity and even made a donation themselves. Defining moment? This is the clearest signal yet that the business landscape is changing and that thanks to social media, no company can hide behind corporate anonymity anymore. One. And finally we get to number one. The number one slot has to go to BlackBerry, owned by RIM, the Canada-based company which pretty much started the smartphone revolution and which until recently held 25% of the global smartphone market. In 2011, BlackBerry managed to shoot itself in the foot in the most spectacular way possible. 
with its famous and crucial email push service down, BlackBerry, a company that should get social media, displayed the sensitivity and acumen of a dinosaur on its way out. Its Twitter service, for instance, came online only at Canada time. Its Twitter teams were oblivious to the service issue. No one in the company knew how to respond, and when a response did come, it was in the form of an announcement informing BlackBerry owners that a press release was imminent. With tweets along the lines of, From iPhone users, we told you so, reaching a crescendo, eventually BlackBerry wheeled out co-CEO Mike Lazaridis. For those who don't know him, Lazaridis is a man who walked out of a BBC Click interview on the grounds that it was unfair because he was asking too many questions on the BlackBerry service and the issues he was facing in the Middle East market. In his YouTube apology of the current crisis, Lazaridis managed to never once say the word sorry or even suggest a time when the BlackBerry email service would be restored. The result, the UK, BlackBerry's largest market, is shrinking. BlackBerry is facing a class action lawsuit from US and Canadian users of its service who suffered the outage. And it appears that with its stock valued at less than a third of what it was six months ago, BlackBerry is on its way to becoming an interesting footnote in the history of smartphone companies. Defining point? This was the moment a global company with global market share, but a market that really stood on a knife edge, failed to grasp what was really required, and social media contact became instrumental in its own eventual failure. Thank you.